Hello, lovely to see you. It's so good to be back. I've had quite a crazy summer, but I've been filming all the way through and I've got so much to share with you. So I really can't wait to get back into making these videos. I'm going to start with this week's vlog, which is about my trip across to the UK. If you know me, you'll know that I live in Normandy in France. So a quick trip across the channel on the ferry takes me back to the UK, where I stayed in the New Forest, and then popped up to London to visit the National Gallery. So I'm going to share that little trip with you in today's vlog. I hope you've all been well and had a good summer. I managed to take a break and just sort of switch off for a little while. We went camping for a couple of weeks and we love to go camping because it really forces you to get back to nature, to slow down, kind of switch off technology and just chill out properly. So just got back from that and feel all refreshed and ready to start again. So enjoy today's vlog and I'll see you again at the end. The journey from France across to England takes about five hours on the ferry and then there's another hour's drive along to the New Forest where my family live. The New Forest is home to about 3,000 wild ponies that roam freely and it's just wonderful to see them in their natural habitat. It's made up of about 140,000 acres of protected land located in southern England. Something else you'll find all over England are these post box knitted toppers. They're usually made by mystery knitters and I love this one just down the road from where I was staying, uh, which was knitted to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. I'm very lucky that my parents live right by this gorgeous stretch of coast and although I was on a working break I did take some time to run along this coastal path and look out at the lovely view of the Isle of Wight and the Needles. I absolutely could not resist popping up to London for a couple of days to check out some art as London is home to some of the most fantastic collections of classic and modern art in the world. If you're ever in London then really take the time to go to the National Gallery. It's home to over two and a half thousand paintings from all over the world by some of the most famous and well-known artists of all time. I really enjoyed reading the explanations of the works of art um, because they really educate you about the artist and about the painting. It tells you interesting little facts and as I haven't ever studied art history, um, I found this really interesting. There's so many hidden gems in some of these paintings, little clues and symbolism and I thought it was nice that the curators took the time to make it accessible to everybody. As an artist myself who works with a lot of bright and contrasting colours, I love the explanation of this painting here by Georges Seurat, uh, which explains that he reworked some of his paintings after he had invented the technique of using dots of contrasting colour to create a vibrant and luminous effect. I felt really emotional when I just stumbled upon this painting by Gustav Klimt. He is one of my all-time favourite artists and I find his paintings so inspirational, especially his use of gold. There's no gold in this one, but I thought the way that he painted the fabric was just absolutely beautiful. If you've not checked out my other videos, then don't miss out. I shared my trip down to Antibes where I went to the Picasso Gallery and also to Saint Paul de Vence where I interviewed a local artist there about her abstract work. Claude Monet is one of my favourite artists because he really pushed the boundaries of what was considered normal and acceptable in art during his time. Monet built a studio at his home in Giverny in order to work on these giant canvases where his sole focus was the reflections on the water. Monet described his water lilies as producing the effect of an endless hole of a watery surface with no horizon and no shore. 
No trip to an art museum is complete without a wander around the gift shop, of course. Um, I did manage to resist, but honestly, I could have bought about 20 books. From <laughs> the trouble was, I was day tripping in London and only had a rucksack, so I couldn't actually carry the books with me all day long. I probably spent about two hours walking around the National Gallery and I was absolutely bowled over by what I saw. I've seen the art produced by all the greats, the great masters. Now I'm going to head to the Royal Academy of Art to see what my contemporary fellow humans alive today are getting up to in the art scene. Just a quick word before I go about London and Londoners. Having lived in um, in France for years, 20 years, and being quite used to Paris, I do. I've been to London sort of once in the last 10 years. People are so friendly. They are so nice. Everyone says sorry, like there's a guy who's watering the flowers in the park and he turned to look because he turned his hose on and he said sorry. <laughs> so it's alright, just doing your job. Like you can stop and ask directions and people are just go out of their way. Just general polite, yeah, politeness. The French, um, <laughs> I love the French and I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up living in France for the world. But they are a lot more direct than the British. They do say exactly what they think, most of the time. Whereas the British probably think just the same as the French, but don't say it um, to your face, or don't imply it either in the way they speak. And it's quite nice actually, from time to time, to be immersed in such a polite society. That's how I feel anyway, as a day, day tripper here. What do you think about uh, the French and the British as far as politeness goes, let me know in the comments below. Next week I'll share with you the summer exhibition that I went to see at the Royal Academy and also some of the work at the Tate Modern. Um, very different to the art that you can see in the National Gallery, but equally as impressive in my opinion. It's so nice to be back home and actually not have any more plans to travel for the foreseeable future. I have lots of projects. I'm working on this portrait commission, which I filmed for you right the way through, so I'll be sharing that with you soon. And I have another project down here of some holding, more holding hands that I'm painting, um, ready for a mural project that I'll be doing. I'm also going to be doing a couple of exhibitions over the autumn and preparing for a big show in January. So I can't wait to get stuck in and actually do some work. School goes back on Thursday, so that's gonna make a big difference. Thank you so much for watching. That's all for today. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit the little subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out. Take care, stay creative, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.